praise the lord let us pray our father and our god we thank you for tonight we thank you for this precious opportunity we are here again in your presence father peter are exalted in jesus name lord it is time to learn at your feet we pray that you teach us from above in the name of jesus at the end of today's teaching let us remain blessed in you for in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen we welcome each and every one of us into this hour of teaching like we said and like we started the other time that was on friday we said we are examining this great topic fellowship with the trinity and we said the trinity is god in himself his word that was made flesh for who became jesus christ and his spirit the holy spirit that is given to those who have given their lives to him and to our fellowship means to be in the same ship that is fellow in the same ship the ship of who the ship of god where god head is the leader praise the lord and when we met the other time we were discussing that the book we are examining the book we are teaching from is the epistle of john first epistle of john and we said john was a beloved disciple of jesus christ if we are to believe any report john the beloved is among those that their report must be believed praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord he was with jesus he was the disciple that jesus christ loved he was the one that Jesus Christ gave the grace to be uh, uh, looking over his mother when he was about to die. Praise the Lord. That is John. So John was with Jesus from the inception of his ministry to the end of his ministry. When Jesus Christ even resurrected, he was with Jesus. He was with them at the upper room. On the day of Pentecost, like we observed yesterday, john the beloved was there he was among the disciples that was displaying the great and mighty power of god on the day of pentecost he was among the disciples after jesus christ resurrected john 20 22 when jesus christ came into their midst when they've closed their door and jesus christ says receive ye the holy spirit he was with them so whatever john says we just have to believe his report now, we said the other time, on the mountain of transfiguration, he was among the three disciples that followed Jesus Christ to that mountain. When Jesus Christ was praying, when Moses, Elijah, they appeared to Jesus. Moses that stood for the law and the patriarchs, while Elijah was standing and representing the prophets, praise the Lord and prophetess, so John was there. He was giving us the report. We started with 1 John chapter 1. We discussed verses 1 and 2 when we met. Tonight, we are discussing verses 3 and 4. As the Spirit of God will give us chance. I pray tonight, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the grace, the grace, the grace to be in fellowship with God. God will release upon our lives in Jesus' name. The grace to have called dear and divine fellowship with the trinity the father the son and the holy spirit don't forget it is not three different doors but it is god displaying himself in three different ways praise the lord so god in himself is war that was made flesh for and the holy spirit the breath of life he gave to adam on the day he created i mean he finished creating adam now I want to read from John, I mean Hebrew, the book of Hebrews, chapter 5. Hebrews 10, 5, rather. I want to read from Hebrews 10, 5. Just to confirm that it is the word of word of God that he made that flesh for. Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10, verse 5. Hebrews 10, 5. Hebrews 10 5. Here is the word of God. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he said, 
sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body as thou prepared for me. That was quoting, uh, the, the writer of Hebrew was quoting Jesus. That sacrifices and any other offering you don't have the light in, but you made flesh for me. Praise the Lord. Now, I want to read First John chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Let us begin our discussion as the Spirit of God will lead us this night. That which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship. We are discussing fellowship with the Trinity. That ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Verse 4. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. Praise the Lord. Once again, let us remind us of this. We will do ourselves good if we become born again. We will do ourselves good if as a result of being born again, we have cordial fellowship with the Trinity. We will do ourselves good if we accept the Lordship of God over our lives. Because, listen, this world is not the end. Our journey does not end here. We have where we are going to hereafter. Hey. If we misuse the opportunity we are having now, what is the opportunity? The opportunity of breathing in and breathing out. Another opportunity is the opportunity to the gospel, raw gospel. To those that are giving us the real word of God, that they are giving us the undiluted word of God. We will do ourselves good if we accept that. The moment we leave this flesh and we open our eyes to face the Lord, if our life is not embedded in the relationship with the Trinity, we are doomed. Ah, we are doomed. There is no way we can do it. We can never make it again. Praise the Lord. Now, the Bible says, that which we have seen and heard, we declare unto you now. He said it, verse 1. He said it, verse 2. John was repeating it, verse 3. Now, let us examine this. Now, is it possible for something you are not assured of to be suffering for it? Something you don't know the, the, authentic, the, the authenticity of that thing. You don't know how true that thing is. You don't know maybe that thing is true or false. But you, you have I mean, agreed to be suffering for that thing. I don't think the apostles, they were as stupid as that. If the report they were declaring was not true, they would not be telling anybody that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Praise the Lord. So they were ready to suffer for God. They were ready to suffer persecution. They were ready to face anything that comes their way because they have touched the word of God. They have seen Jesus Christ. They had what he was saying. And as a result of that, they could bear witness in the presence of anybody. When the Pharisees and I mean the, the elders, the high priests, when they were telling them, they were warning them that we have warned you never to speak anything in the name of this man again. What was their report? They said, look, it is better to listen to God than to listen to you. We are the eyewitnesses. We were there with him on the mountain of transfiguration. We were there with him when he raised Jairus daughter from the dead. We were there with him when we heard that voice from him that this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. Hear only him. That was John. Peter gave us his report. We read that 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 16. John was also giving us his own report now. And he says once again, that which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you, you, who are the who? I was among the who, you, was, you were among the who. When we were living our lives in the darkness, when we have not given our lives to Jesus Christ. So we are declaring that thing to you. And he says that ye also may have fellowship with us. Says we have fellowship with Jesus. You're supposed to have the same fellowship with Him. Praise the Lord. Now, let us see the report of Jesus. When Jesus Christ was about to leave this world and He was praying at the same time, and He was as He was praying, He was giving report. Like we told us the other time, listen. Everybody will give report. 
husband will give report of what happens to his family. <laughs> Wife will give report of what happens in her home. The church elders, they will give the report of how they tend the sheep, Jesus Christ, and there to their care. Everybody will give report. The ministers will give report. Apostles will give report. Pastors will give report. Evangelists will give report. Prophets will give report. The teachers, they will give report of the gift God gave to them. How well they made use of it. And if they are able to write to me about, they are in serious problem. So when Jesus Christ was praying, at the same time, he was giving report. Let us hear what verse 21 of John 17 says. John 17, verse 21. That that they may be one, they may be what they may be one, as thou father art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, that they may be one as we are one. No, we are cheating ourselves. Praise the Lord. I mean, we are cheating ourselves. Those that have refused to give their life to Jesus, they are cheating themselves. The reason why is this. You are in the Father. Where we have Trinity, let me ask you, what is that thing that confesses you? You are having cordial relationship with the Spirit of God. In fact, you are having a firm and standard and solid relationship with the Trinity. Please tell me, what external force can affect you? What external force can face you? What force from the coven of the evil one can face you or can wrestle with you and try they cannot? Because until they subdue Jesus, until they subdue God, until they subdue the Spirit of God, that is only where they can subdue you. But being separate from God, that is the reason why you are having the kind of problem you are having. And you continue to have that problem because of what? You refused. You refused. You refused to establish standard relationship with the Spirit of God. Paul was asking the people of the Romans. Let's go there. Romans 8, part 1. It was a greatest question that up to today, Nobody had been able to give an answer to that question. Romans 8, 31. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? And that who is no exception of anybody. No exception of witches, wizard, the occultic people. No. No. Yoruba will call some people the Egbeji or the Aroni. They are not exempted. Say, what can we then say to this? If God be for us, who can be against us? In other words, if you are in the Trinity, if you are having a cordial relationship with the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, what is that thing that can face you? What is that tribulation that can face you? If, if tribulation comes, you are going to subdue. You are going to triumph. You will win. They, they can't win you. Witches cannot win you. Wizard cannot win you. Fam cannot win you. Families, familiar spirit cannot win you. The occultic people they cannot subdue you because of what you are in Christ Jesus. And since the creation of the world, we have never seen any other external force that subdued Jesus. In fact, when even when Jesus Christ was having his temptation, Matthew four, Luke four. The Bible says, when the tempter came, he couldn't overcome Jesus. I like this in, 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 in Yoruba, in, in, in CNS in. Nigba ta ye ti she, ti ya wa ti da ye, agbo wipwe jesu lo she gun eshu. Awa egbe se raf, awo she gun eshu, ni oruko oloru meta lokan. Oruko oloru, oruko oloru meta lokan. In the name of God of Trinity, God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, praise the Lord. So my people, those that are listening now, and those that will still listen, please, give your life to Jesus. Establish cordial relationship with the Trinity. He says, we have the fellowship with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And He says, verse 4, and these things 
right way unto you that your joy may be full. When you are in Christ Jesus, your joy will be full. When you are in the Holy Spirit, your joy will be full. When you are in the Father, the God, your joy is going to be full. Now, let us examine this. When we say give your life to Jesus, now, how will you do that? What are you going to do? Let us go to the conversation of Jesus Christ with those that came to ask questions from him. Mark chapter number 10. Mark 10. Mark chapter 12, rather. Mark chapter 12. Mark chapter 12. Uh, I want to read verses 28, 29, and 30. Mark chapter 12, verses 28, 29, and 30. Let us hear the word of God. And one of the scribes came, and having had them reasoning together, and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, Which is the first commandment of all? A scribe came to ask Jesus. He knew, but he came to ask Jesus. And Jesus Christ can never fail in his answer. Let us hear what he said. Verse 29. And Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Jesus Christ was quoting from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. When the people of Israel left Egypt, they passed through the Red Sea, and they were in the wilderness. God sent Moses to them and told them that, Listen, listen, the God of Israel is one. The God of the universe is one. Listen, before, the, uh, before our Muslim brethren, before they were pronouncing the word, la, I mean, la ila ila lao, it was the Israelites that first knew God to be one. After the Israelites knew God to be one, that was when our Muslim brethren, they also learned that from the Israelites. Because the Israelites were before the advent of the Muslims. Praise the Lord. And God was giving them this commandment. Jesus Christ was quoting from that verse, from that book, the fifth book of the Pentateuch. Praise the Lord. The Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Or Deuteronomy, rather. Praise the Lord. And Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Verse 30. And thou shalt love the, the, the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Praise the Lord. Now listen. Let us listen to this. Praise the Lord. Now, there is one chorus in Christendom who say, Every living soul, every living soul, praise the Lord. Every living soul, every living soul, praise the Lord. The living soul are refers to those that have given their life to Jesus. Not those that are breathing in and breathing out that have not died. No. When we hear the, this, this music or this song or this chorus or this praise or whatever we call uh, we, uh, the name we give to it, Every living soul, praise the Lord. It means you that you have given your life to Jesus. That Jesus Christ has been the director of your life. Is your personal Lord and Savior. You have declared for Jesus. You have been to the cross. You have bowed down. You have confessed your sin. The cross of Jesus has passed through your life. You are the living soul because you have been given the spirit of life. That spirit that was taken away from the lives of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden because of their disobedience, because you have gotten to the place of the cross, you have gotten to the place where Jesus Christ was crucified, the cross has passed through your life, the life that was lost in the Garden of Eden has been given back to you, that they may have that, that life and have it more abundant, that they may have that life and they may have that life in abundance. Those are the ones that have given their life to Jesus. Now, this is the, the explanation. Now, many of us will know, let, not many, all of us will know the grinding machine. The one we used to grind our pepper, our maize for Ikuru, for Moema and the likes. Now, you know we have the reservoir where we normally put our, uh, what we wanted to grind or what, what we're about to grind. And the engine, 
that will help the reservoir to do the normal work. Now, if the engine is okay and we have the reservoir, we have the fan bed that connects the engine and the reservoir. The moment the work of the engine is all right, whatever you put in the reservoir, if you want to collect it, it is going to be fine. In fact, the grinding machine, they, it will do the neat job. It will give you the normal thing you want, the normal paste you want to see, the normal paste. But if the engine is not okay, praise the Lord, the engine is working like, mm, 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 mm. whatever you put on the reservoir, what we are going to collect is not going to be the, the normal paste you want. In fact, it's going to waste your, waste your pepper or your beans. Praise the Lord. It is the same thing. When our soul has been given to the Lord Jesus Christ, the soul, some Bible portions, they refer to the soul as the spirit. We, are, we have the human spirit. We are, going, we are still going to that. John 4, 24, 23, 24. Now, if we have given our heart to Jesus Christ, if our spirit, our soul, our, our spirit has been given to the Lord Jesus Christ, he has been in control, praise the Lord. The work our heart will be doing will be okay. The work our mind will be doing will be okay. What we are going to be using our strength for will be the normal thing and the right thing. Let me re-explain again. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, if Jesus Christ has been our personal Lord and Savior, he, we have given our soul, our spirit, we have given everything to Jesus. We have been to the cross of Jesus Christ. We have confessed our sins. We have become born again. Our soul has been given to Jesus, which means the inner man, the real inner man that was corrupt has been taken away, or let me say, chased out. The moment we give our life to Jesus, we have nailed that old nature to the cross with Jesus. So our raising up now, like Jesus Christ rose from the dead, is the spirit that is with the Jesus. So God will give us the same spirit. Now, if we have that same spirit, our heart is a place where we express our emotion for hatred or for love or for lust. The mind is where it is. That, let me call it our uh, our conscious mind, where it will help us to remember whatever we want to do. You see, some people will tell you, hmm, "I'm going out. If I come back, I pray I will remember." Where we finish our discussion, we are going to start again. Yoruba will call it "ibia for That is the mind. Listen. Suppose you have given your life to Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is the director of your soul. Will you, you will believe with me. You will believe with me that the work your heart will be doing, your emotion of your heart will be love and not hatred. Will be likeness and not lust. Praise the Lord. Real love will come. It's not going to be substituted with lust. Real likeness will come and not hatred. And our mind will continue to remember what is good, what is good, what is good, not what is bad. Our mind will not be reminding us, and no, don't forget your, 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 uh, your toaster you want to go and see. Don't forget the madame you want to go and see. Don't forget what you want to steal. Don't forget the robbery you want to do. Don't forget the fact you want to do. Don't forget the cause you want to make. No, no, no. But it will be reminding us, don't forget you have not prayed. Don't forget you say you will examine the word of God. Don't forget, somebody said we are going to help. That is what our mind will be reminding us to do because of what our soul has been given to the Lord Jesus Christ. So automatically, when that is done, it means God the Father, the Son, and the Spirit of God. So in the Trinity. So as God is relating with His Word, the Son, relating with His Spirit, Holy Spirit, God will be relating with all this cause. What connects the three of them is inside of us. Is inside of us. Is inside of us. That is the what expected of us to be saying. Except people understand this concept of being born again. And this concept of you must love the Lord your God with your heart, your spirit, your soul and everything. We are going nowhere. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And it says now. You must love the Lord your God once again. Let me read verse 30 of Mark chapter 12. Praise the Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, 
and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment, which means God has taken control of your soul. Your heart will be full of likeness, will be full of real love, not bad emotion, not lust, not bad thing. Your mind will be reminding us of, of reminding you of what is good, what is nice, and what God wants them to well, want, wants you to be doing. That is what your mind will be reminding you to do. And your strength, you will not be using your strength. Your strength as going to the house of God, fasting, prayer, arms giving. So, because what God wants to see in your life, He has been seeing it automatically. You are having fellowship with the Spirit of God. Don't forget, once again, we are discussing fellowship with the Trinity. The Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, now, again, of First John chapter 3, verse 4. And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. Now, why won't your joy be full? You are enjoying relationship with the Trinity of God. I mean, with the Trinity. Trinity the relationship with the Trinity. Fellowship with Trinity. Your joy will be full. God will be relating to you. God will be talking to you. Badura. See Lorun. Tian Soro. Biore. They will pitch their tent with you. God will be dwelling in your heart. Jesus in your heart. Holy Spirit in your heart. Now tell me, where and how will the sin have its way in your life? God, oh, praise the Lord. God will never commit sin. Now, how will the sin have its way or creeps or cracks or even man, what any English you want to use? How will the sin enter into your life? God is in your life. Jesus is there. Holy Spirit is there. And those ones, we have never seen them sinning. And they can never sin. And they will never sin. That is why this... Read it. And let's see what... Uh, let, let's hear what he says. First John 3, 9. First John 3, 9. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. It's not possible. For his seed, that is the Spirit of God, remains in him and he cannot sin because he is born of God. God is not a sinner you are not going to be a sinner. Though, the life you are living before was the life of a sinner. The life I you I mean, the things I used to do, I do them no more. The things I used to do, I do them no more. The things I used to do, I do them no more. There is a great change since I'm born again. I have been welcomed into the family of the Trinity, there is a great change since I am born again. Therefore, I cannot commit sin. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. This word we have, except you give your life to Jesus, what is going to happen to the people of the world will happen to you. Because you will love the, the world. The love of the world will be in you. And automatically, the result of those who love the world is going to happen to you. This is no cause. Don't say, I'm, I'm not causing you. We are not causing you. That is a fact from the word of God. First John chapter 2. First John 2. First John 2. I want to read verses 16 and 17. Or let me, let, let's start from 15. First John, first John chapter 2 verses 15 16 and 17. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. What is now going to be the end product of those who love the world? Verse 17. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God. In other words, he that doeth the will of God. In other words, he that is in the Trinity will remain forever. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our human spirit is what matters most to God. Our, it matters most to God. Our inner spirit or our human spirit or our soul, that is that is what Satan is after. 
it now depends on you to release your soul to either God or Satan. God will never force you. When Moses was giving them the, 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 the word of God, he says, I put two things before you, death and life. You have to choose one. But he says, I advise you that you choose life so that you will live. He didn't say, I will compare. He didn't say, I will force you to take life. He didn't say, I will force you to accept, law, accept the Lord. He didn't say, I will force you to take life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It is not by, by choice. You have to take one. Take one. Take one. First John, I mean, John. John chapter 4. Who are the people that will enjoy this relationship? Don't forget the analogy we gave to us of the grinding machine of Mark 12, verse, verse 30. Now, let us hear what John 4, 23, 24 says. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in the spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Verse 24. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in, in, in other words, those that will worship God of the spirit. God is a spirit. God has no hand. We created hand for him. He has no hand. We created here for him. He has no eyes. We created eye for him. He has no mouth. We created mouth for him because he's a spirit. And he says, those that will now worship that God who is a spirit. They must have their human spirit well grinded in the spirit of God. So those are the ones that will enjoy the fellowship of the Trinity. Praise the I pray for us in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace, the grace, I mean the grace to find time. The grace to give ourselves to the fellowship of the Holy Spirit so that when we enjoy here, we still enjoy the fellowship when we live here. The Lord will show us it upon our lives in the name of Jesus. But the answers to that, amen, is strive to give your life to Jesus. Once again, I am going, and I'm going to still say this, the CNS members. God did not send back to establish all these things we see. No. Thank God, it was put down in his registration of February 14, 1930, that we believe the Bible as the general word, general word of God. But it says our aim, our objective, our primary assignment is in the New Testament. is prayer and preaching of the gospel. Prayer and preaching of the gospels. Like the apostles told those that are at Antioch that we will never leave the divine assignment and be running after table. We have an, a divine assignment. That is the assignment given to God of Moses Uri Malade, and that is the assignment he, he came to establish. That is why it was called order, not church. CNS was an order. Yoruba will call it Egbe, not church. Because of what? It was not to be established as the church we see today, but as an order or association. Once again, the, our work and the meaning of our name, that is the topic of another time. Not on this topic we are uh, we are treating. Praise the Lord. But I mean, when we get to that time, God will help us in Jesus. And we are going to explain that. But again, I'm saying this. When CNA started. But in the evening of Sunday, after they will come to the order or association in a designated places where they will have their open air crusade in the evening, in the evening, in the evening. There was no Sunday service with CNS. And if anybody wants to dispute that, let the person give us the proof that they are we, we are going to give we are going to give them our own proof of the registration of February 14, 1930. They have Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. No, and even Saturday VG, yes, no Sunday service in the morning. But they have what? Open year crusade in the evening. Praise the Lord. And the purpose, the only thing God sent Ori Molade to come to do is to call the attention of every Christian body to go to the church of the apostles. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Kerubu ati serafu efu hirubi re saye enyi lakwe lati shawan 
Ti yo pa de o luwa lo ke. Nobody is saying you will leave your fellowship and attend CNS. That is not it. But the moment you cling to the mission and vision of this Baba, you are spiritual seraph. You are spiritual kiru. So if your mission, if what matters to you most is that the salvation missions of Jesus Christ do not go in vain, you are already a CNS member. You understand? So the only assignment God sent Baba to do here on earth is to call every Christian body to go back to the church of the apostles. That is why he says our work is prayer, not prayer means to say to do come and the preaching of the gospel, not the old way, not the old testament. The Bible says, if the first testament was not fought, was faultless, nobody will give room to another, but, but because it has fought, that is why the new testament came of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the work Jesus Christ gave to the apostles started yesterday on the Pentecost day, they were preaching the resurrection of Jesus. That is, listening to this. They have no special regalia. They have no special seat. No gadu. No special garment. They have no special seat. They are not giving any ororo. They are not giving any title. They didn't send the 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 the, 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 the fivefold ministry as 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 oh yeah, as we turn into as we turn as we turn into in CNS. No, it was not so. God did not send my body to do that at all, and he didn't do it till he died. It was after his death that people. They cooperated with Satan to, to want to destroy what God gave to this Bible. But glory to God. Nobody can, de can destroy it. It is not done. If nobody can kill Jesus Christ, they cannot kill the mission of CNS. And listen. So the only thing CNS stands for is to call the attention, the third time, to call the attention of every Christian organization to go back to the church of the apostles. The, the, the starting from the from the act of apostle to, to the book of Judah. That is our work. Once again, let's establish that before we finish today. Acts chapter 6, verse 4. Acts 6, 4. That is where the work of CNS every two seraphs will cling to that. What you didn't see the apostles practice. If you see anybody practicing it in CNS, it's a bastard. Not the reason of Oribolado. He didn't do what God sent up about to do. If anybody is doing anything and he's still standing and say that is our own doctrine, he's a bastard. Not the reason of this man. Act 6, 4. You are correcting them and they are saying no. They are still insisting that we are not going to change that. Then that's what the bastard will do. The bastard will not, I mean, the bastard is a bastard that wants to destroy the work of another man's father. But the true son, we want to stand and see to it that the work of his father will never be destroyed by anybody. So every true seraph, every true chair will stand up and stand against every ordinance and every doctrine, every teaching that is in the New Testament. Every true seraph will stand and will, will, will negate that. Every true seraph will stand and will go against that. In the spirit, especially, so that the work and the mission of this man, Moses will not go in vain. Acts 6, verse 4. But we will give ourselves continually, not for a certain not for a set period, not for a short period. No. Verse 4. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the world. Now, before we close, let us hear. How amplify Bible? Put that first John chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. First John 1, verses 3 and 4. I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. What we have seen and ourselves had, we are also telling you so that you too may realize and enjoy fellowship as partners and partakers with. Ready partakers. So John wanted us also to be a partaker, co partaker with them. And this fellowship that we have, which is a distinguished mark of Christians, is with the Father and with his Son Jesus Christ the Messiah. Verse 4 now. And we are now writing these things to you so that our joy in seeing you included, included in what? 
in the fellowship with the Trinity may be full and your joy also may be complete. The joy will be complete when you leave this place. Your joy will start here and the moment you leave this world, it will complete when we get to heaven. That is where we are working for. I pray for us again in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace to have cordial relationship with the Trinity, God will show up upon our lives in Jesus' name. The grace not to miss it here. Most especially, I am praying for our, cherub, our cherubim and seraphim members. Cherubim and seraphim. The grace not to miss it this time. God will give to us in the name of Jesus. But our answer is, when we see the people that are correcting us from the word of God, let us take to the correction. And God will help us in Jesus' name. On Friday, we shall be continuing from where we are stopping tonight. Before the grace of God that has no boundary, that has no limit, will be with us, go out with us, and protect us till we meet again on Friday. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen.